micro history detective and his trusted sidekick That's are, me. are at it again on an artifactual journey. Today we're going to deal with a very sensitive and painful topic uh, which falls under the rubric of lynching. Yes, I said lynching. When I think of lynching, I immediately think of Billy Lady Day Holiday rendition of Strange Fruit or Nina Simone. Both of these songbirds put a hurtin', yes, a hurtin' on that song. Why don't I have my trusted sidekick share with you just a, a few of the powerful lyrics. Southern trees bear a strange fruit, blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Black body swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Mm, mm, mm. If that doesn't hit you, nothing will. So what are we really talking about here today? Well, the reason we're actually talking about lynching, unfortunately, is in the news. Three senators actually voted against an anti-lynching bill. It's like we always talk about history as cyclical, so unfortunately nothing is new under the sun, especially on a topic like lynching. Because 2022 is actually the 100th anniversary of the dire anti-lynching bill. In January of 1922, Missouri Representative Leonidas C. Dyer introduced the dire anti-lynching bill to the House of Representatives. But unfortunately, it was filibustered time and time again and never actually saw the light of day. And the one name in modern day that, that people can uh, appreciate is Emmett Till. Emmett Till, yeah. Um, very tragic lynching case in Mississippi. During the 1950s. Right. There were thousands of people whose lives were taken through lynching, most that have been documented through the NAACP's work from the 1880s to the 1920s. So while there might be 2,000 reported lynchings in a 40-year period, unfortunately, there were so many more. So one of the famous names actually connected to the anti-lynching movement is Ida B. Wells, of course. Right. Um, there are various books on her, articles, and so forth. But unfortunately... Ida B. Wells was not the only African-American woman who was fighting for the anti-lynching movement. Anti-lynching crusaders headed by Mary Burnett Talbert out of Buffalo. Buffalo. In the 1920s, their motto was a million women united to suppress lynching. They published this very rare pamphlet in 1923 with statistics from 1889 onward about the number of women who had been lynched the causes for the lynching and the locations. August 1922, Miss Mary E. Jackson of the National Organizer of the Anti-Lynching Crusaders, she was from Providence, Rhode Island. She stopped over Old West in historic B. O. W. Old West Baltimore Thank you. from the National Meeting of Women's Clubs and organized the Anti-Lynching Crusaders to assist the local NAACP in its drive to wipe out lynching. And of course, Reverend Monroe H. Davis is the president at the time of the local NAACP. Some of you are familiar with uh, Monroe H. Davis because of his work at St. John's AME Church in Lafayette Square, which is in the boundaries of historic Old West Baltimore. Baltimore. Weekly meetings were also held at a very another historic location in Old West Baltimore known as the Sharp Street Community House connected to Sharp Street Methodist Episcopal Church or as it's known today, Sharp Street United Methodist Church. It's 1206 to 1210 Edding Street. And interestingly enough, every woman was encouraged to offer a one minute prayer at noon every day from August 25th until October 1st in the goal of helping the anti-lynching crusaders reach their ultimate mission. Powerful narrative, powerful. powerful. Once again, primary source material allows us to tell a fuller, more uh, comprehensive and provocative story that can resonate with today's population, correct? Okay. So stick with us at Nanny Jack and Company as we continue to uncover African-American history one artifact at a time. Mm -hmm.